For this Flatiron Studying Tech Tip, we're going to talk oil pumps. We're going to do a quick overview of all three different super oil pumps uh, that there are. Because if you're doing a timing belt or any manner of engine rebuild, probably two, if not all three of these pumps have at least been on your radar. So which one is the right one for you? Well, first question is, what are they? This pump is the AA300, or the 10 millimeter oil pump that came on the 2 liter WRX and the single AVCS turbo Subarus. Um, then in 2008, when Subaru added the secondary, uh, I'm sorry, exhaust AVCS to the STI, they needed a higher volume pump to maintain pressure, so then this one came out. This is the 11 millimeter oil pump, or the AA360. Um, the other one is this one. This is the JDM 12 millimeter oil pump, or the AA310. A lot of kind of speculation as far as what car this, this pump comes on. Turns out it's the twin turbo legacy in Japan. Um, when you added the second turbo, you needed this volume of oil pump to maintain target pressure. So how can you tell, other than the part number, maybe what is on your, your car, if you bought it used, etc.? Um, well, there's actually a pretty easy way to tell because the casting numbers on all the oil pumps are different uh, to accommodate the different size rotors. Because the rotor, the difference is the rotor thickness, not the, uh, not the diameter. So, so one way to tell actually is if you take the backing plate off, take the rotor out and measure it in millimeters, that'll tell you what size pump you have. Um, but you can also just look at the casting number on the pump housing. So the 10 millimeter pump uh, right here on the back and uh, right up here on the front is the casting number. And this one conveniently is 10. Um, small footnote, in 2008, Subaru uh, also brought out the 76 casting for the 10 millimeter oil pump. The internals, the function of the pump is, is exactly the same as the, the, the 10 housing, so this can be a 76 or a 10. Um, the 12 millimeter is a 12, so on the back and on the front, it's casting number 12. The 11 millimeter oil pump is a 78, um, so no idea why or where that number comes from, but on, again on the back and on the front of the pump, 78. So that's how you can tell what pump you have if you're you know, just looking at uh, the front of the, the engine or somebody hands you a pump, whatever. So now, how to pick the right pump for you. Um, that is a difficult question and I can't really give you a, a general answer because there is no general answer. It's, it's really gonna come down to all the specific aspects of your build. Um, our, our general rule is if you are building a 100% stock engine, you know, stock short blocks, stock components, everything like that, or if you're doing a build with everything being stock to stock tolerances. So you would pick the oil pump that they did for a reason. And it, from what we've seen, it's better just to stick with the pump that Subaru designed to go with that engine rather than try and go with something outside the box. So if you're doing everything to stock tolerances, stock, stock components, etc., probably staying with the stock pump that Subaru put on there is your best bet. But what if you're going to do something different? Um, what that would be is something like increasing the red line that the engine is going to spin to, um, changing the restriction in the oiling system, like loose your bearings. Well, that's when you might have to start looking at other pumps to, to hit your target oil pressure. Uh, and again, I can't give you a specific answer, but I can give you kind of the general oil theory. So there, there's a couple points to keep in mind. Um, and, and before I even go into that, one thing that I'll mention is if you're, if you're wanting to make a change like that or going to be making a change like that, monitoring your oil pressure is, is crucial so that with at least a gauge, if not actually doing data logging to see what your oil pressure is doing, and ideally, um, have a baseline, so, so get a, some information before you make the change and then look at what that uh, is doing after the change so you can make sure that you're, you're getting the pressure that you need you know, at, at the right RPM, etc. Um, and relevant to that, also keep in mind, oil pump is a big part of that, but the type of oil, the weight of oil, and the temperature of the oil, all of those also have a pretty big effect on oil pressure also. So make sure that you're looking at all of the aspects of uh, your oiling system to make sure that you've got the right pump and are getting uh, the results that you need. Uh, but so, so generally speaking, oil pump theory, this is not specific to Subaru, this is just general, very general. Um, the larger the volume of pump, the larger the rotor uh, cavity is that it's trying to fill every time it comes around, pull pump from the pan, put it into the engine. The lower the RPM threshold is where that pump will then cavitate, and when the pump cavitates, it's no longer able to efficiently deliver oil pressure to the engine. So in theory, a larger pump will cavitate at a lower RPM threshold than a smaller rotor pump would. Um, and again, what that is, 
you'd have to measure it, uh, but that's something to watch out for. So, um, point number two is if you're re restricting, I'm sorry, if you're changing the restriction of the oiling system at all. Textbook example would be deciding to go with the looser bearing clearance because that's reducing the restriction on the oiling system going through the system, um, but also possibly changing the turbo, changing how the oil is fed to the turbo, or putting on like an external oil cooler with different size lines. Changing that restriction, especially reducing the restriction, can likely require that you need a larger volume pump to maintain pressure. Just like when Subaru added ABCS, the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter pump was still sufficient. When they added the second ABCS system, they needed a larger volume pump to maintain target pressure. So that's something to keep in mind if you're changing the restriction of the system. Um, the last point to make is uh, why is too big of a pump possibly a bad thing? Well, all of these pumps have a relief valve. So what that means is there's a maximum pressure that they will hit, and then the relief valve opens, and then the oil basically gets put into a holding pattern around the pump. You don't want the pump or the oil to sit in the holding pattern of the pump any longer than it absolutely has to because as it's just going around and around, you're heating that oil up, uh, which can, com can possibly compromise viscosity, and possibly frothing the oil up, which can also compromise pressure and viscosity. So you want to look at the relief valve pressure, and especially if you're modifying the relief valve pressure, you want to make sure that um, you're, not, you're not running into an issue there. But as far as too large of a pump, what would happen is uh, you now have a much higher volume than required to hit your target pressure, so you're going to hit that relief valve pressure much sooner. So the oil will spend a lot more time going around that holding pattern and possibly causing an issue. And uh, just kind of as a footnote, if you increase that maximum pressure threshold, well, you're increasing that pressure now for the entire system. And so anywhere that the oil goes through, there's a lot of seals and, and gaskets and stuff that it's uh, making contact with. And if you now exceed the, the capacity of those gaskets, you could actually have issues with seals and, and leaks and that sort of thing. So, again, picking the right pump is, is pretty important. And those are just kind of the broad things to look for. I wish I could give you a specific answer, but again, it's just there's so many variables at play. That's where monitoring the system, doing your data logging, watching gauges, talking to your engine builder, talking to a professional, that's going to be the key piece that you need to pick the right pump for your, for your application if you are going outside the box. So, Hope that helps. It's a lot of information, um, but hopefully this is helpful to you. If it was, please drop a like and stay tuned for more Flatirons Tuning Tech Tips.